Hi, everyone. Uh, it looks like it's just gone six o'clock and uh, we'll wait and see if anyone else does join. I know a few are expecting to join a little later on, plus it's being recorded. So uh, uh, anyone who does join later on will be able to come in and, and have a watch of this. But uh, welcome. Uh, this is our uh, High Clear Australia Zoom. Uh, obviously, disappointing time given that uh, due to COVID we can't travel and it means that we can't get across to Royal Ascot and uh, Royal Ascot really is uh, one of the magical times of the year for any racing fan, but particularly for high clear owners. Um, Harry, it's been uh, great to have Harry Herbert join us uh, from the UK. Uh, good evening or good morning to you, Harry. Uh, how's uh, everything over there in the Royal Ascot? Yeah, good, good evening and good morning. It's a beautiful day here and um, hence the gone for the linen look. Um, it is absolutely scorching um, and it looks set fair for the week ahead, possibly thunderstorms later on in the in the week. But um, it, it's going to be a fast ground Ascot, that's for sure. Beautiful, beautiful weather forecast. And that's what you want for Royal Ascot, isn't it? It's really just about that, that sun coming out, enjoying the best of summer that's just come uh, to the UK and, and really just enjoying uh, the warmth and the, and the sunshine while it's around. No, no question. Um, it is such a great race meeting. It is very different this year. There's no, no question. Obviously, much smaller crowds and still uh, the wretched COVID, you know, lingers, lingers around and, and, and stops everyone really, you know, getting there. And the, so I have no idea what it'll be atmosphere like. I mean, 10,000 people is not a lot of people in a vast, uh, um, you know, a vast grandstand like Ascot's. But we'll see how we go. I mean, it's a it's a you know, I think Ascot have done a great job um, getting things, you know, rolling and getting the government to agree to, to go to these this number. So, yeah, and we've got some very exciting horses to uh, to go to war with. So, I think it's going to be a it's a very very buzzy week ahead. Well, that's the thing. You look at the the High Clear team heading to uh, the meeting this year, and it really is. Uh, a strong team, but it, it's, it's spread across all all uh, five days as well, which is exciting. Gives the team something to cheer for, especially over here as well. Uh, in the middle of the night, we'll be up uh, cheering over the, the course of the five days. So uh, looking forward to it. Uh, look, we'll get into a bit of that later on. But uh, before we head down that track, I uh, just want to uh, make mention of the fact that at the end of this uh, Zoom, we will be answering some questions. Um, if you've got any questions for me, um, I should actually introduce myself uh, in case I haven't actually met you. Um, I'm Andrew Hawkins. I'm the uh, High Clear Australia Racing Manager and uh, very excited to be a part of such a, uh, an amazing worldwide team as uh, High Clear. So uh, obviously Harry Herbert, uh, Founder, Managing Director, Chairman, and uh, we'll also have Luke Borthwick joining us, who is one of the High Clear Australia owners. He's been an owner both in uh, Australia as well as in the UK. Um, he's actually not uh, uh, driving, uh, sorry, he's not on video because he's driving back at the moment from the Hunter Valley, uh, but he will uh, just uh, answer a couple of questions now. Uh, Luke, great to uh, have you as a part of this uh, Zoom. Uh, just tell us for you, from your perspective, what's been your experience as a High Clear owner in the past, uh, both as a High Clear owner generally, but also at Royal Ascot? Hey, Andrew. Uh, hey, Harry. Hey, everyone else on the call. Um, look, uh, I've been a, a High Clear owner uh, since 2014. Uh, and one of my most memorable experiences is actually at Royal Ascot when I was lucky enough to have lunch at the Royal Ascot Racing Club uh, with Mark Kershaw. And then very, very, very lucky enough to be snuck into the uh, pre-parade ring and the parade ring when Telescope won the, the Hardwick Stakes. Uh, by a, 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 an eight-length margin going away from him. And I, I just remember seeing Harry standing there, throwing his hat up in the air um, and just having a, a wonderful a wonderful time. And I was extremely lucky to go into the, 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 the winner's box or the winner's, winner's room at, uh, at Royal Ascot, which is, I think, a, a very privileged place to, to be in and, and then spend the rest of the afternoon... Um, Sipping, uh, uh, sipping wine and, and having a very cab racing, a, a very pleasant um, place to be on, on level four uh, at the Royal Ascot stand. So uh, that's been uh, definitely one of my highlights from from five horses. Um, none of my horses have, have, have happened to win, uh, but look, it, it's a it's an amazing. Um, amazing moment to have one of your horses run at, at Royal Ascot. So just an absolute superb 
uh, a superb group of of people that that uh, I'm, I'm a privilege to be a part of, um, and, and just enjoying the. Uh, I just love Royal Ascot. It's like nowhere else, really. Uh, I know we have the Melbourne Carnival over here in Australia, but really, Royal Ascot five days there is, is really like nothing else. And for you this year, what's going to be the experience this year? Because it's obviously going to be quite different to, uh, well, not last year, but at least years gone by before that. Yeah, look, I'm uh, I'm I'm obsessed with Royal Ascot, so I will be watching from ten thirty all the way through to two a.m. Uh, every night. Um, I'm lucky enough that I'm going to be able to work from home, so it's uh, going to be a late night and then uh, um, uh, hopefully not too early a morning to to get started. But I'll be watching every race all the way through, uh, just from what I call the uh, the Bondi Turf Club, which is my uh, my home. Um, on the on the big screen TV and and, and cheering um, all the the high clear runners and then hopefully uh, some of the getting a couple of wins when I can um, back a winner hopefully doing the form. Well, I, I think I'm going to have to get down to the Bondi Turf Club. Sounds like a, a good place to be. But uh, what we want to know is obviously you're a man who does the form. You look at all the races. You look at uh, uh, you look at all the races from a long way out. Um, have you found anything this week that you think might be uh, a, a solid chance, something that uh, people who have tuned in can have a uh, little spec on? Yeah, look, um, I, I actually really think that Campanelle in the Commonwealth Cup is probably one of the, the bets of the carnival. Um, I don't want to go to say that, you know, it's definitely going to win, but I, I certainly think that Campanelle will run really, really strongly in the Commonwealth Cup. Um I like something a little bit more uh, at odds in the Diamond Jubilee, a horse called Neha, um, and running quite well. And, and, and I'm hopeful that we can get something around eight or nine dollars for Neha. Um, and then on day one, I'm, I'm definitely in the St. James's Palace Stakes, going to have a, a small bet on Lucky Vega, who ran very nicely in the 2000 Guineas um, uh, to, to the, the, to the favourite and just half a length off. Um, excuses in the Irish 2000 guineas, but I, I really think that um, uh, Lucky Vega will be a, another horse to, um, to to have a small bet on as well. I think I'm on the same page as you with Campanelle. I think she looks uh, a very uh, difficult horse to beat. Uh, ran well at the meeting last year, and you just look at her as a, a ball of speed. She'll be uh, she'll be hard to beat. Uh, that's for sure. Um, cheers, Luke. We'll get back to you uh, later on. There might be uh, some questions coming your way uh, from the people that have tuned in. But uh, Harry, I'll come back to you. Um, owner experiences. What do the owners get at Royal Ascot uh, as being a, a high clear owner, what is what does that get you? Not even having a runner at the meeting just for being a high clear owner. Um, well, we always have a we always have a, a you know champagne um, and eats um, gathering starts round about. Captain Kershaw has the everything sorted by eleven eleven thirty, and, um, and 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 that's the full gathering really. Um, but also, I think when you know when up. Um, you know, you guys, Aussie friends come over, it, 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 we probably would have all met up previously anyway, maybe at the jockey club rooms or stable visits or, um, you know, at my home, um, Clodagh's home, Broadspear and I. So it, 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 race day is, all five days are incredibly exciting. I mean, this is where every owner in, you know, this country wants to be. Of course, you want runners in classics, but actually to have a runner um, and a runner with a chance at the Royal Meeting is 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 seriously um, exciting. And um, I, I see Peter um, Peter Barnett is on the is uh, is on the on the Zoom here. And Peter's um, Peter's had some some fun with us with uh, not just with Harbinger, but uh, um, I, I think uh, Opinion Peter and you know been some great great moments of of. And you think I get excited when. High clear horse wins at Royal Ascot. You ought to see P Barnett. <laughs> <laughs> he managed. To, he even managed to watch um, Harbinger win from the Coolmore box <laughs> and scream the house down. But it is there is nothing like it. You know, under normal circumstances, 70,000 people um, all dressed up to the nines. Um, it, it if you can finish in that first four you've really, really achieved. Um, and uh, yeah, over the years, it's been a real happy hunting ground for Highclere. You know, we've, I think, I think because I hate sending a horse there that doesn't have 
a proper chance of finishing in the first four that we've actually got a very very good record of that um, over the past um, what, nearly 30 years. So um, yeah, we'd like to think that our horses are always a, a sort of fun each way bet. I mean, I must admit, uh, when I was looking through some of the race records and, and past winners, and you, you do, you see the Highclere name popping up uh, time and time again. Uh, before I get to some of the winners, though, I just want to ask you, I've seen before um, watching from Australia or being there on track, and I, I've seen you uh, before in the carriage with the Queen going down uh, the straight there at Royal Ascot. Just what is that like? It's, it's um it's very spo it's very spoiling very very spoiling way to arrive um basically um the first time that that i was lucky enough to do that um was back in 1997 and the the queen had uh, asked me to um to stay for the week at windsor and um after your lunch you know and, and everyone sort of prepares you wait for the queen and the rest of the royal family to um you know, to, to get ready to get into the carriages. And I'm standing there and there's a there's a, a, a sort of valet next door to me, this beautiful sort of scarlet kit on and, you know, just staring straight ahead. And um, and there's a sort of, I don't know, sort of uncomfortable silence. And so I looked at him and I said, uh, well, I've got a runner this afternoon in the in the last race, horse called Heritage. And, um, and he looked straight ahead and he went, thank you, sir. <laughs> and that was it. And anyway, the weirdest thing, there's a weird story here. I mean, incredible story because I wanted, this is a, I think it might've even been one of Dane Hill's first crop horses. And I wanted to call him Heritage and the name was taken by the Queen. And, um, and I said to my dad, the, the Queen's reserved the name Her Heritage. Would you ever mind having a word with her and see if she'd ever release it? Because I'd love to call this Colt Heritage. <laughs> he said, absolutely not. You can do your own dirty work. So, um, I wrote a note, um, letter to the Queen, you know, and um, you don't just say, you know, dear your majesty. Um, it's basically um, Her Majesty the Queen, Madam, with humble duty, I beg to ask your majesty whether I could possibly use the name heritage, which you have reserved, blah, 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 blah. Um, anyway, she writes back by return of post, dear Harry, of course you can have the name heritage. It doesn't fit any of my current horses, and I hope he's very lucky for you. Well, it was Heritage who ran that day at the Royal Meeting, um, trained by John Gosden, ridden by Frankie de Tory. Um, I tipped it to the valet on the way, on the way in, and the, and the carriage is a really long-winded answer to your question, but, but when you get in the carriage and you go through Windsor Great Park, it's just so beautiful and quiet, and you're almost sort of lulled into the clip-clop of a sort of, you know, it's a, it's a unique experience. And then as you get nearer to the course, suddenly there are children and, and um, people, you know, waving their flags and, and, and obviously screaming for the Queen. And then as you get to the top of the straight through the Queen Anne gates, um, it just erupts. This noise is like a wall of sound. And you get these great comments. <laughs> on, on my I was just sort of, you have sort of lulled into this, ah, oh, you know, thinking you're a bit more special than you are and until some woman said and who the fuck are you <laughs> <laughs> so your boy crashing down to, oh, you know wave wave away um it's it's very special and it just shows these are magical moments and i mean obviously you know it, it, once you've had a winner at royal ascot you've really tasted from the cup and um and heritage started things off and i think we've had 10 you know since and um plus loads that have finished in the first four. Um, but yeah, the biggest winners, the biggest margin winners were, were Harbinger, who, um, you know, just was mind-blowingly exciting um, in the Hardwick, um, uh, won by many lengths and in a very fast time. Um, of course, he went on to the King George, knocked half a second off the track record and won by 11 lengths, beating two Derby winners. So that was a good moment. And then Telescope, yeah, he, he um, as Luke said earlier, he absolutely blitzed them and, um, and sometimes it's the, un the ones you're not expecting, you know, I mean, I think, um, I can't remember, Peter would know, but whether, I don't think Opinion was, I don't know where he fitted price-wise, um, Collection with William Haggis winning the Hampton Court and um, Memory winning the Albany, um, um, really exciting, exciting times, but um, yeah, we've, uh, those horses we've had with Sir Michael Stout that are the slow burners um, <laughs> in the three-year-old handicap, the King George the fifth handicap, we've managed to win that four times. Um, 
And this week, hopefully, you never know, but hopefully we might add a fifth um, to the tally. Well, it looks like the King George V uh, is the race where Highclere goes with uh, a couple of strong chances, but I will talk to you about that uh, in the uh, coming minutes and uh, the coming moments. But uh, I just want to talk to you about some of those winners that you've had. Um, you know, you talk about... Uh, you talk about heritage starting at all, but uh, Beekeeper there, uh, a horse who obviously ended up with Godolphin and, and ran third in the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, he was the most lovely horse, um, son of I think Rainbow Quest. Um, again, a typical Michael, Sir Michael Stout slow burner. Um, you, you know, and these horses are the types to very much look at coming on down to Australia. Um, opinion came down and, and, and won Group One down there. Um, and of course, Libran was, he was a, a year older, but he was fourth in the Duke of Edinburgh and um, a little unlucky fourth. I don't think he would have beaten the winner, but he probably should have been second. And that's, you know, we bought him immediately after the royal meeting the following week um, uh, to come down. And of course, you know, he, he, he's been a terrific, was a terrific servant to us and uh, had a lot of fun with him. So, yeah, as far as... Um, you know, looking out for horses that are suitable to come to Australia. Royal Ascot week is um, packed full of potential uh, potential horses that would suit Australia. I'm sure we'll be uh, talking about that uh, in the coming days, that's for sure. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a few that catch the eye. We'll just have to see uh, if they're available to come down under. Uh, but, you know, you look at the list of names that the Highclere's had that have won the, at, at Ascot as well. Uh, even the likes of Approve, you know, a very, very good uh, uh, two-year-old uh, was Approve. And, and Telescope, you mentioned him before. Uh, I remember when we saw the prior cult that we currently have uh, with Highclere in Australia. Uh, I remember you saying just how much he reminded you of Telescope. Yeah, Telescope is the most beautiful um, horse. Um, is the most beautiful horse. He's a, he's a rather sad. He's a national hunt um, stallion um, now. It's just extraordinary, isn't it? You know, he was favourite for the Derby. Um, son of Galileo. Wonderful female family. Um, as beautiful a horse as you will ever lay your eyes on. And Sir Michael decided just before the Derby that he, you know, just to, to get him on a horse box um, and go around the town because he a new market because he'd been a bit sort of frisky or a bit unsettled getting in a horse box as a two-year-old and um, sure enough disaster happened because he sort of scraped a paston um, getting on or off must have been off the box I think and the paston got infected and um, he couldn't run in the derby and um, I mean it was just an absolute shocker because he went on to be a very good horse. Um, he was second also in the King George um, the Sixth and Queen Elizabeth stakes, um, but he didn't win that Group One. Um, and as a result of not winning a Group One, he ends up as a National Hunt stallion. But uh, yeah, very happy memories when he won in 2014. Um, um, actually, our last yeah last winner at the Royal Meeting. We've had some good close since, but he was our last winner. Well, hopefully that can change this year. Uh, we will go through now a day-by-day -day summary of uh, the Royal Meeting. But first, uh, how many runners are you expecting the Highclere team to have at Royal Ascot this year? I think we're going to have eight. Um, if it all, everyone holds together and, and you know, there's not a sort of panic on ground at all. Um, I mean, yeah, we've, we've, we've got uh, the two-year-old on Tuesday, the organiser in the Coventry. Um, we've got Ascension in the Hunt Cup on the Wednesday, and then on the Thursday, the King George V um, handicap. Um, you know, we've got Title, um, and we've also um, um, we've also got Parachute. Um, and at the moment, just haven't had the final word with Roger Berrien as to whether Title will go for the King George V handicap or go for the King Edward the Seventh. Um, so we're still sort of trying to work work that out. Um, I think both horses are very well handicapped. Um, so, um, I mean, we would be very disappointed if they, if they you know, if the parachute gets in off 88. Um, I mean, he, he really has to run a big race. Um, and likewise, title off 92, um, with Roger still considering it at, at King Edward, you know that he's also very well handicapped. So I think we've got, yeah, we've got a serious shot of, of adding a fifth, um, this year, um, and um, which one it will be, uh, time will tell. 
So we'll start with Tuesday. You did mention him just then, uh, the Coventry Stakes runner in the organiser. Um, he's a horse who's just joined the High Clare team. Uh, just how did uh, how did High Clare come about uh, acquiring him? Well, we um, we had a runner in the race um, that he won at York um, and at Royal Patronage with Mark Johnson. Um, so I remember at the time thinking, "Cool, that's a bloody impressive winner," and we'd run very well. You know, we'd finished fifth or sixth, and you know, perfectly good debut. But um, yeah, the organizer sluiced him. And Al Donald, who, who's you know, bought all of our best sort of proven horses, including Libran and, and others um, for Australia, he called me up and he said, look, this, this horse is, is you know, is, I think he's a serious horse. He's owned by the trainer, um, Joe Chewitt, a small trainer in Lambourne. Um, and I think if we move quickly, um, you know, we might be able to get something done. Um, so we moved very swiftly um, and we bought him and um, Al said, when Al buys a horse, it's always not just subject to vet, it's subject to inspecting the horse. And um, he, he went to see and he called me up and he said, unbelievable, he said, this is a belter of a physical. Um, he said, this is a serious, serious horse to look at. So, um, you know, we bought him, passed his vet, I went to see him and it absolutely knocked my socks off as well. Um, He's never run on this ground before, but there's a great, you know, he's good. He's very, very good. He was good before he ran. Um, the lad that rode him um, at York was told that he was above average and he got off afterwards and he said, above, he said, above average, Joe. He said, that's the best two-year-old I've ever sat on in my life. Um, so I think he's the real deal. He's by an unfashionable stallion called Coach House. Um, and um, we'll see how he goes. But just, um, Andrew, just talk for a second. I'm, I'm going to disappear for two, two minutes. I'll be right back. That's okay. No worries. Well, the organiser uh, stepping out the Coventry stakes, uh, the Coventry uh, for the two-year-olds, closest thing that they have to the Golden Slipper. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the organiser goes, uh, especially against uh, a filly that has come in across from, uh, from the US, uh, a filly by the name of Coffee Maker. Uh, Wesley Ward, who uh, obviously has a very good record with his two-year-olds at Ascot, but has never actually won the Coventry Stakes. So we'll see how she goes. She's uh, currently about uh, seven to two or so. Um, when Harry gets back, we will have a chat about uh, a couple of these group ones. Obviously, day one is the day where you have uh, most of the group ones uh, or the most group ones of the week in the form of uh, starting off with the Queen Anne, as always, the Queen Anne stakes over a mile, uh, then obviously going to the Sprinters, the Kingstand stakes, a race that Australia has been very successful in, but hasn't actually won for 12 years since Cine Glass gets the job done, and then uh, the St James's Palace as well. So, uh, Harry, I was just saying about the group ones, the three group ones on, uh, on Tuesday, on the first day, and... Uh, the Queen Anne, it does look a race where Palace Pierce should be should be winning there, you'd think. Yeah, he's he's a beautiful horse. He was bred by my sister and brother-in-law, John and Carolyn, um, yeah. high clear stud, um, and sold um to Sheikh Mohammed. I mean, he he's a sensational horse. Um, way John Gosden's best. I think he has every chance of being a world champion this year. Um, the way he won the lockage was, you know, in the style of a the horse that's trained on and improved again and uh, can't see him being beaten. No, it does look the first little lock for the week, really. There uh, does Palace Pier. Uh, the King Stand Stakes, uh, a, horse, uh, a race we know well down here in Australia, but I was just saying when you uh, came back on, it's been 12 years since we actually managed to win the race. Uh, obviously, no runners this year, but it's going to be about uh, whether Batash has uh, come back after uh, a little bit of a, a setback over the winter. Yeah, I mean he's so good. I mean he's 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 so fast. Um, you know he's the most exciting sprinter that uh, you know we've seen here probably since Deja, I would guess. Um, um, also, we raced in Sheikh, the late Sheikh Hamdan's colours. Um, um, I think the chat is that he's in fantastic form. Charlie Hill's reports, um, and um, if he is, well then he'll take all the beating. And the St. James's Palace Stakes, the three-year-old Colts, the poetic flair. I'm not sure if any horse before has run in the English, the French, the Irish 2000 guineas and then come to the St. James's Palace Stakes. I'm sure it must have been done, but uh, we see poetic flair uh, trying to do it here and he is the favourite. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, he's he's the most um, he's the most amazing man, isn't he? Um, <laughs> um, Jim Bulger. <laughs> he's just as a law unto himself. Um, highest rated horse in the race by some margin. Um, I suppose Thunder Moon's a couple of pounds um, below and, and and could easily you know come back as it were. But um, I, 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 I think he'll be t I think he'll be tough to beat. Um, I mean, you have got um, Chindit, Richard Hannon's horse, mm -hmm. who ran well and very well in the Guineas. Um, got a bit unbalanced and came late. I think Ray, Ascot will be a much better track for him. Um, so I would expect him to to be there or thereabouts. Um, but um, yeah, for me, I mean, the form is is is, is crystal clear that. Um, Jim wins. Jim wins with a rather remarkable and very tough horse. Oh, and it's always remarkable when Jim Bolger gets a win. You, you, it's 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 always a story uh, every time. Um, we move on to the Wednesday um, day two. We've got uh, Highclere had a couple of entries. Uh, from what you're saying, it sounds like Parachute will go to the King George V, um, but you'll still have Ascension in the Royal Hunt Cup, um, coming off a, a pretty good uh, pretty good win last time out. Yeah, he's a very, very decent horse, this. Um, um, we made a complete Horlix by running him at Chester. Um, he ran well in the Lincoln first time up, very competitive handicap over a mile um, at Doncaster, the first big race of the season. Um, and he ran very well, um, not fully wound up. He then, um, as I say, we then sort of made, made the error um, and then ran him back at Newbury, um, and he was very impressive. He'll be really suited. It's a cavalry charge. There's something like 30 runners. Um, and he'll be suited by that. You know, he's a long striding horse. Um, I'm better suited to give a little, you know, it's a sort of easier ground than we're going to get. But um, Roger reckons that he's now, you know, matured um, significantly. And you watch him, I watched him this last week go up Warren Hill. Um, and he really stretching well the horse. I've never seen him look look so good. And he's just the sort you need for a for a race like this. Um, it is, you know, you've got to have luck in running. You've, um, but I think um, you know we, we haven't. I can't remember our last Royal Hunt Cup runner, um, but he certainly ticks the boxes as a horse that um, has the profile to run a big race in it. It is certainly a cavalry charge. Uh, I remember uh, a couple of years ago, I was on TV here in Australia and uh, I'd been tipping a FARC to win for uh, Sheikh Hamdan and managed to just hold on by a nose. And uh, there was a there was footage of me going uh, a little bit crazy in the studio. <laughs> so it might be the same if, if Ascension manages to get the job done on Wednesday. But uh, we do have one group one that day as well, the Prince of Wales of Stakes, uh, a mile and two. Uh, look, we have get a couple of horses in here who are well known to Australians. We've seen a Dave come down here twice and win the Queen Elizabeth Stakes twice. Uh, we've also seen um, Armory come down as well and uh, run well in a Cox Plate. Um, the, I guess the query, especially with a Dave, he, he generally needs uh, easier ground than what he's going to get. Um, Armory too, when he came down here, he was on on a softer track than what he's likely to get here for the Prince of Wales of Stakes. Yeah, I mean, um, I saw a Dave last week and um, my goodness, I mean, what a fantastic, properly mature horse. You know, he does look in great shape, but I totally agree with you. He does, you know, there's no question um, that his history, race history says that soft ground um, is better for him. Did he, did he, when he, when he won, won down the, uh, in Oz last time he was there, that was that ground, was quicker ground, wasn't it? Or did I uh, it was, it was ground? quicker. It was still, it, it still had a bit of give. Um, I'm not, exactly sure i'd have to have a look here and see what the um what the designation was but it was certainly quicker than when he'd won the year before um but it wasn't it, it was it was it might have been a good four or a soft five i'm just having a look here it was a good four which is uh, generally considered to be i mean it would be the equivalent of a good track there in the uk so uh, a good effort really all things considered yeah um i mean he's a wonderful horse goodness i mean we haven't seen him since but um you know also one of the horses uh, of course is lord north um you know frankie de Torres, my john gosden um uh, son of dubawi who's again you know proper mature animal um and i i, I suspect that these are the two that are going to be fighting out the, the finish we haven't seen um him since he won in uh, in maidan um 
obviously trained for this race that was on good ground um it's a it's a wonderful race the, the prince of wales um and, and of course you know we're, everyone is so excited here to see love reappearing um the superstar filly um trained by aiden o'brien it's a fabulous race, one of the best races of the um, of, of the week um and will the filly beat the colts um hmm i think i'd go for lord north personally but uh you know i'd love to see the aussie star the aussie traveler star <laughs> i day do do his stuff and 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 as i say love with a big white face and what an amazing filly she is and she loved the ground well, as you say it is really one of the races of the week it's going to be a really interesting battle it's going to be a really exciting battle and uh, yeah, at this stage, I'm, I'm still tossing it up. I think it's uh, between Lord North and, and Love for me, just trying to figure out where, where to go. But uh, still got another 48 hours to decide. So that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, Thursday, yeah, we get to King George V. We've already had a chat about it. Um, parachute and title. Um, potentially both going to run. Uh, we'll still wait and see what uh, what ends up happening with title. But uh, the King George V, a race you've experienced success in before. Um, look, it must be a race that you'd love to win for a fifth time, uh, given oh, you're in the race. No, no question. Um, and you, you, you can imagine we're not the only um, ones running horses that are um, that are well <laughs> well handicapped. <laughs> every 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 trainer's got a, a good a good horse in there well handicapped. But this time, I really do think we have two horses that are under the radar as far as the handicap is concerned. Parachute, um, a son of See the Stars. Um, we unbelievable this horse, a beautiful pedigree. Never got a bid at the sales. Um, and I think it was Francis who was with Ed Walker looking at one of our other horses with Ed, um, who sort of said, what's that? And it turned out that the, the breeder still owned the horse. And um, so we swooped in and, and ended up buying 50% of him with the, the breeder keeping a leg um, and another owner of Ed's, a long-standing owner, um, you know, also taking a leg. Um, He's, he's a big improver, a lazy horse at home. Um, but we saw him when he won at Newmarket, making all and stretching away, you know, that he's really coming of age now, this horse. You saw him, you saw him last week physically too. I mean, he just looks fabulous. Um, 88, he's on the cusp. As we speak, the trainer's sending me all sorts of messages. <laughs> Do you run title? I see title, you know, hasn't chopped <laughs> up, you know. Um, I think we're going to need six or seven to come out for him to get in. Um, if he does get in off 88 uh, it, and has a clear passage, and it is a rough race, this, you know, it's a very tough race. Um, you've got to have luck in running. Um, but if he does that, um, he, he, I'd be disappointed if he's not competitive. And title, um, this, this is the most beautiful son of Camelot. Um, very handsome, very almost sort of telescope-esque in his, in his look, um, you know, but, but very like his sire. Um, he was second on his debut last year, would have won in another jump, um, just got beaten a short head. He then finished second at Newbury um, to a Gosden horse, the two of them fighting out the finishing. He just, he races with his head slightly high and um, he's not dishonest, this horse. He's just babyish. And, and it came to the moment where it looked like, you know, he'd done enough to win. And the horse, and the, just, you know, the other horse got his head down on the line. It was very frustrating. So we, if he'd won and come out of the race fine, we might have gone to a derby trial with him at Chester, probably the Queen, uh, the, the, the Vars, Chester Vars. Um, but he didn't come out. He was a bit touchy-feely. You know, there's a bit of immaturity still about him. So Roger looked after him. And he's, he, he then went to Yarmouth, where he won very impressively, beating a, a, a hot pot uh, filly of William Haggis's, um, very impressively with the, with the rest of the field a long, long way back. Um, I think he's the real deal, this horse. Um, he excites me. And my only question mark about this week, apart from which race he's running, um, will be the ground. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I'm just I'm just not sure that fast ground is really his bag. Um, so that'll be another discussion with the trainer. But he's good. If they have to run against one another, the two different syndicates hate doing it. But obviously, on big meetings like Royal Ascot or group races, you you know you you've obviously got to. Everyone's going to have their fair chance. Um, so um, I, I couldn't split them. Give I really couldn't split them. 
<laughs> Just give me one sec. Um, so we will see what happens there. I think um, I think title for the future. The Aussies are after him. We've had a couple of agents um, call me up about him, um, wanting to come down to Australia to race um, with Camelot, I guess, doing so well down there. Um, and certainly, you know, he would tick the boxes to a degree. Um, well, he would tick the, tick the boxes, but his career at the moment, we've got to see where he takes us because, um, um, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot more water to go under the bridge in the UK first before he moves, even if we think about going down under. Um, I'm sorry about that. The building security, we're just, uh, we're just knocking, making sure that, uh, uh, that we weren't uh, intruders in here, uh, given it is a public holiday down here in Australia. So I uh, was thinking uh, something was amiss in here. Uh, thankfully, I'm not an intruder. <laughs> um, so look, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, we hope that parachute and title may end up down here one day, but we'll wait and see uh, what happens in the uh, weeks, months and years ahead, as you say, there is still plenty of water to flow under the bridge. Um, just the Thursday feature, um, obviously the oldest of all of the Royal Ascot races being the Ascot Gold Cup, uh, two miles, four furlongs or 4,000 metres. Um, before we look at the race, I'm just wondering what it was like in 2013 being there when the Queen uh, managed to win the race with estimates. Uh, I remember seeing um, I remember seeing that video of uh, of your brother-in-law, John Warren, uh, who's obviously the bloodstock advisor for High Clear as well as uh, for Her Majesty the Queen. But just seeing seeing him uh, getting so excited as Estimate managed to get that win. Uh, what was it like being there that day? It was unbelievably exciting. I mean, it was the most exciting race anyway. Um, and everybody was screaming for the Queen, you know, to win. Um, everyone on the race course. And when... Um, you know, Ryan Moore got uh, estimate up sort of virtually on the line um, to win. It just, the place went completely bonkers. Um, now, I, I wasn't obviously watching, um, everyone was watching out on the track, and then they started showing the replay of my brother-in-law and the Queen, you know, sort of screaming like banshees. And, and I, thankfully, my sister intervened. If you look back at that, Trevor, she intervened because I think she was so frightened that John was sort of basically going to jump on the queen and do something he definitely shouldn't do jump as in like yeah give her a big hug um but um it was a great moment a race she'd always wanted to win um you know I, it was fantastic and then the scenes obviously in the unsaddling enclosure were just spectacular so uh yeah lovely anytime the queen has a winner and a winner at the royal meeting it's it's very special but to win a gold cup that was terrific and of course this year huge amount of history of course the uh Great Stradivarius trying to um, trying to do what Yates is the only horse to have done before, which is to win four uh, gold cups on the trot. And um, he looked very good first time up in the group race at Ascot, having his prep. And he'll love the ground. Um, he's um, I can't see him being beaten personally. No, I must admit I was trying to find something to beat him, and I was having a look through and. Look, I mean, the thing was last year, I actually thought there was a bit of a query on him going to Ascot. Um, he'd had that run, I think last year he went to the Coronation Cup first up, uh, first up and, you know, ran, ran an okay race there, but uh, was trying to take him on. And then he, he comes out and wins by 10 lengths in, in one of the most extraordinary performances you'll see. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to take him on, I Big. think. Yeah. That's big cool. highlight of the week. I think anyone who loves racing and loves sort of superstar horses that hang around for a while. Um, and of course, you've, you know, you've had plenty of experience with that in Australia, the mighty winks. And I was just, you know, lucky enough to see um, a, a race a few times. I think anyone this year is certainly looking at, at, at a horse who's, you know, to, to potentially, if he can do it, win a fourth. Um, it would be mind boggling. And um, I see no reason why not. He looks better than ever this year. Friday, we get to uh, perhaps the most intriguing of all of the, the high clear runners this uh, this week, uh, Cache in the Albany Stakes. Um, what's her story? Well, we um, we go to the Breeze Up sales, um, um, Jake and I, every year, and we look to try and buy a couple, sometimes three. Um, and Jake watches the horses breeze, gets his shortlist, you know, checks times. And, um, and then, you know, I, I sort of very grandly come in and look at the shortlist and we discuss it all and he, he said I think there's a really nice daughter of acclaim um he said she breezed very well had a fantastic gallop out um 
and it's interesting the gallop out you know past the post is time um and when this filly appeared oh my goodness i mean she knocked my socks off everyone's socks off. i mean she's a beauty and um we uh, managed to buy her for sixty thousand, and um noticed that that uh, uh george barry um who was the superstar new young trainer had uh, was underbidder um and so i we went up to him afterwards and said well look so you're underbidder you know we've just bought her would you like to train her so obviously that was a yes um and he uh, very quickly he just let us settle in for a few days and then he got back to me and he said wow he said this this filly can really go um and she doesn't look she's not a run and jump small filly she's got size and scope um working very well looked terrific this past week and um um, look, it's a very competitive race, but um, she's she's good, this filly. And if she handles the ground okay, and no reason why she shouldn't, she's a very good mover, um, I, I think she's got a great chance of being very competitive. Her work suggests that she's she's a cut above. Uh, and even that, that debut was just was just extraordinary. It's fantastic to to see her win in that in that manner. Um, and I can see you know, the, the the market's most certainly respecting her and respecting her abilities. And uh, I also read, read a Racing Post article as well talking about uh, George and his uh, his very quick uh, rise on the scene there. So it'd be great to see him get a Royal Ascot winner, even better in the high clear colours. Um, you've also got Operatic entered in the uh, Palace of Holyrood House Handicap. That's one of the new races, uh, five furlongs for the three-year-olds. Yeah, she's an interesting one, this. Um, she's very fast. She's by showcasing from a very quick family. She won twice last year um, on the trot um, with Ed um, and Simon Crisford training her. Um, and we sent her, we, we ran her in a listed race, but the ground had turned at Newmarket and she ran a stinker on that ground. Um, training well, brought her back, ran at Goodwood. Again, ground not perfect for her, but she's really blossomed since and her work has been very good. Um, there's their idea. They want to do it. The, tra the, the, the two trainers, as it were, Ed and Simon. Um, they said she's in such good form that if she does get in, and I think she might squeak in off bottom weight, um, then um, at the moment we would have William Buick, I think, to ride her. Um, um, or we've also got Hayley Turner on standby, depending what weight she gets. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, she's quick and she'll love, she'll love Ascot. I mean, that sort of stiff stiff track really is, 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 is right for her. But yeah, she'll be a very, she'll be a long price. She will, wouldn't put your house on her, but just a little interest. Oh, hey, that's uh, that's what we want. Just a little interest and hopefully make it go a long way. Um, two group one races on the card. The first, uh, the newest of them all, the Commonwealth Cup, uh, six furlongs for the three-year-olds. Uh, Luke and I both mentioned Campanelle before. Uh, I'm curious to know your thoughts on the Commonwealth Cup. It's a whew, look. It's 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 going to be a very good race. The 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 the, the filly that really interests me is Suesa mm -hmm. coming over um, from France, um, owned by George Strawbridge um, and, uh, and, and, and trained by Francois Rojo um, down there in Po. Um, unbeaten um, and looks very special. Um, this is a big step up, but you know, she goes in there with 112 rating. Um, Campanelli is 113. This filly is improving rapidly. Personally, I will go with Suesa to um, to topple um, Campanelli, but it's a hell of a race, and there's some very good other horses. Supremacy, trained by Clyde Cox, is um, disappointed um, in the Pavilion States at Ascot earlier earlier in the year when we were third with Spycatcher, um, but he's training the place down. Apparently, um, he looked very looked very big and sort of heavy that first day at Ascot, but um, he's very very good. It's it's a it's a terrific race. Um, but personally, I think this could be something a bit special, this Suesa. Um, it's rare it's, it's rare as well that you don't get the, uh, the, the, the George Strawbridge colours aren't around the mark in one of these races uh, each year. He seems to have a Royal Ascot winner, if not every year, then every second year. Yeah, or, um, yeah, I know he's, he's a wonderful supporter of, 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 of British racing and um, I, I wish him all the very best. He's a lovely, lovely man. And... Um, and uh, yeah, great, great race, fantastic race. 
And the Coronation Stakes for the uh, three-year-old fillies uh, over a mile, we get to see the Thousand Guineas winner, Mother Earth, uh, stepping out there. But again, a lot of these are quite lightly raced. Yeah, they are. I mean, there could be a, a lurker here. Um, but um, the one that really interests me is, um, is a Snow Lantern, trained by Richard Hannon. Um, beautiful, beautifully bred filly, um, daughter of Sky Lantern, who won the 1,000 Guineas, also trained by Richard Hannon. Um, this filly, when she won her maiden at Newbury, absolutely lit the field. I'm never, I mean, you know, sort of slightly you had the hairs on, the, on your, um, standing up on the back of your neck, just the rhythm that she got into and the way she quickened and won. And she'd been working the place down as well um, before that, um, beforehand. And they decided not to run her in the, um, in the 1,000 guineas but to swerve it, and to, this was always the plan. So I will go for Snow Lantern um, and uh, to beat the Guineas winner in uh, the coronation. And then we move on to the Saturday fifth and final day. It comes up quickly, uh, not quickly enough, depending on how, on how uh, we're going, but hopefully, uh, honestly, it's... Uh, uh, something that we're all looking forward to, but uh, ready for uh, Royal Ascot next year, hopefully with Australian uh, attendees there. But uh, on Saturday, the fifth and final day, Spycatcher. Uh, you mentioned Spycatcher before, and he's uh, likely to go around in the Jersey Stakes, uh, the 1,400-metre Group 3 there for the three-year-olds. And we get to see Thunderous, uh, last year's Dante winner, going around uh, in the Hardwick Stakes. Again, a race that you've, uh, you've managed to win a couple of times before. <laughs> Look, um, he's, he's a lovely horse. Sadly, he's not what we hoped he would be. We hoped he might be the, um, you, know, uh, you know, better than he's turning out to be. So th there's got to be some discussion as to whether he should really be running in the um, Hardwick. Um, I would hate to run him and just see him completely out of his depth. Um, the same rules apply if he can finish in the first, you know, three or four, well, then probably let him take his chance. But Ryan Moore rode him at Newbury. Um, and, you know, just said, look, he's a nice horse, but he's not a, you know, he, he's, in his opinion, he's a sort of listed group three horse, um, even though he's a, he won a Dante, um, but the Dante's form hasn't worked out. My, so Michael Stout's horse that, that uh, he beat um, hasn't gone on to be the horse they all thought he was. Um, so I think we've just got to slightly play it by ear. Now, telling Mark Johnston um, or suggesting to Mark Johnston that you don't run one of his horses at Royal Ascot, um, in a race like the hard we can go for a list a listed race i think next week or the week after there is one for him at newmarket uh, will not go down well i've already tried to broach the subject and got a sort of um we'll we'll wait and see <laughs> that's a so very I'm good of, impression <laughs> i'm very nervous about um about that conversation he's a gorgeous horse um but he's you know he really needs further as well he's a sort of horse that might turn out to be a you know, Gold Cup horse next year, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to do him down too much, but um, um, I don't think he'll be winning. I think it's highly unlikely to be winning at the Hardwick. And Spy Catcher, yeah, lovely horse. Um, he was second in the Acom last year at York um, on his uh, second start. Um, he, um, you know, he's been placed in two group races this year, um, running over six furlongs each time. Um, and we just feel he'd be better to be running over seven back onto that Acom trip. Just just gives him a bit more time to get organised. And, uh, and I think this horse is better having a horse to fire at in front of him. So um, I think he's a horse that could run into a place in the, in the jersey. As winning it, tough, very tough. It's one of those races, the jersey, that uh, always is, is touted as, as a secondary race for the three-year-olds, given they've got so many other options. But it always seems to throw up a really nice horse or two going forward. It does. It's a, it's a, I think, I think like a lot of races at Royal Ascot, I think they've, they've got more difficult as the year's gone on. It used to be sort of small fields and, you know, you could get into the Queen Mary with sort of, sort of eight or nine runners and now it's about yeah. 20 or the Albany is the same. Um, but um, yeah, you know, he's, he's, this, this is a decent, decent enough cult and, um, um, but it does take a good one, um, probably one that's improving faster than he is to win it. But I think he'll be, you know, he's a tough horse and he's hardy and I think he'll run well. But I, I, I think might just be found wanting um, 
to win a race like the Jersey. So the day's feature, again, another race that Australians know quite well, uh, the Diamond Jubilee Stakes. Um, again, no Australians running in it this year, of course, but uh, we do see Starman going around, uh, who's only been beaten once, looking for a first Group 1 victory here. And uh, I did see one racing post scribe recently suggest that they thought he could measure up to any of Australia's best sprinters, that he could come down and win an Everest or one of those, those big races down here. Um, just curious on your thoughts on that. Um, I, I mean, he's been talked about by Ed Walker for some time. Um, I mean, Ed, you know, reckons one of the best horses he's, you know, he's, he's ever trained. Um, so I think it's, you have to pay attention. Ed's, Ed is come from a school of Luca Kamani, which is still not the most optimistic school in the world, um, more the school of pessimism. Um, so when he gets this buzzed up about a horse, um, you really do, you know, sit up and listen. Um, son of Dutch art, um, you know, very, you know, improving rapidly. Um, he won the, he won the uh, Duke of York um, at York's May meeting, um, you know, by a neck from Nahar, who I guess um, reopposes, does it? Yeah, reopposes. Um, I think this ground will suit him better. And um, he apparently is working brilliantly. But um, this is a tough race. There's some very nice horses in here. Um, I'm just, I was looking at it funny, just, just wondering, you know, what the, what the final field would look like. Um, Art Power is a very good horse, Tim Easterby's horse. Um, you know, he's, he's very good on his day. Um, and um, I, I, I think it's prob probably not got the strength in depth that it sometimes has. Um, so we're looking for a new star to, 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 to come forth. Um, happy power, Andrew Balding, source, good horse. Um, but I think, I think we'll go with the infectious sort of optimism of Ed Walker and see if <laughs> Starman can, can, do, can do his stuff. Great week of racing ahead. My goodness, it's exciting. Um, and um, no need a bit of stamina. So Claude has got me on the old Peloton every day. So. <laughs> it's, it's funny you say that because Peloton, uh, I was actually reading an article before about Peloton launching in Australia and getting ready for, uh, uh, for its big, uh, big unveiling down here. It's actually, uh, you, you've had to smuggle them in in the past. So uh, <laughs> yes, I think, that, I think the, Peloton, the Peloton might be helpful there for, for helping with your stamina for, uh, during the week. And look, it's going to be even bigger if uh, Highclere manages to have uh, a winner or two um, just on... Well, we'll... Uh, you, we'll be doing one, our best. We'll, well be which doing one, our best. Which one do you think is the best of the chances? Uh, <laughs> I think that um, I think Cache um, probably, but I also I I couldn't split parachute and title get into the King George V, and they're not fighting out the finish together. I will be very surprised, and and I guess sort of ground wise, I think title off 92 is, is, is special. If he doesn't go for the King Edward and he runs in the King George V, then I think he'll take some, really will take a lot of beating. Yeah, I have to admit, uh, title, I thought that, that win, um, or just, just his performances throughout his career, he's looked like he's very, very progressive and 92 definitely isn't going to be the end of him uh, there, that's for sure. Um, and just quickly, if you had one jockey, one trainer for, for people to follow, if they, they just want to be able to have a quick look at, at uh, the races, is there any jockey and trainer uh, that they should be following this week? Oh, goodness. Um, you, 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 you should always... I mean, the, the, the new superstar kid, George Bowie, is, has taken the training ranks by storm. Um, he's running at a staggering um, strike rate at the moment. Um, you know, it's, he's too good for it all to be beginner's luck because he's, he's hitting with these remarkable statistics. Um, so, I mean, we're thrilled that he's training Cache for us, um, but watch all of his runners this week. Um, so he's, too, he's got some very smart two year olds, got a very good filly that runs in the Queen Mary, um, you know, and he's, he's got a decent colt as well um, lining up at the, at the week. But he's a trainer to follow. Um, otherwise, um, I think, no, not one in particular. They're all, you know, the, 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 John Gosden's not going to fire, be firing as many um, bullets as he might normally do. But um, the main bullet, of course, is um, his mighty beast in the uh, Palace Pier 
and the Queen Anne to get things rolling on day one. Just don't miss that race, whatever you do. I think this horse is, a, is as, as exciting a horse as we've seen in a long while. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And I, when you said before that he could potentially be world champion by the end of the year, I think he's definitely on track to be uh, world champion if he keeps producing performances like he did in the lock uh, We've got a couple of questions that have been fired through that I'll uh, put to you. Uh, the first one is about Hint of Stars, who uh, won it last week at Yarmouth. Um, they're asking, uh, where's he going to be heading next? Um, we're trying to work that out. Um, look, he's, um, he, he was such a disappointment on his first start fight there, um, on soft ground at York, um, which he absolutely hated. Um, and then running back at Yarmouth, um, he'd worked the place down. He looked fantastic and he was, he was very impressive. Now he should have been impressive because his turf mark was, was a, a lot lower than his all weather mark where he got the hat trick up on the all weather. But, um, Kevin Philippe de Feuille um, was, was very, was convinced that, that the, this turf, you know, all weather thing just simply wasn't an issue. But what he wanted was, um, was you know, was fast to ground. Um, and I, I thought he was very impressive the other day. And I think he'll um, be a horse that, that will progress as we anticipated him to progress. Um, it's just a question of which flight we put him on, Andrew. Yes. Um, do, we get him, do we put him on the July flight? down or do we um or do we sort of let him you know see if he develops into an ebor horse um you know the clock would be ticking on that front but i think there's a very big not the big a big win you know um as he handicap win for him before he comes down there but he's smart and he looks smart beautifully bred horse and um yeah i think he's i think he's great great, great value for really really good purchase and hopefully with uh, matty kamani um involved and his sister <laughs> Francesca also a share owner in the horse um we'll have a lot of fun with him down in Oz oh let's hope so um that was very exciting uh, it was about uh, it was almost 1am here and uh, yeah I must admit I must uh, I, I think I woke up a few of my neighbors giving him a cheer home um one here from Matt uh Highclere seems to have a lot of two-year-olds in the UK this year is that uh, is is there more this year than there normally are? Um, there's some better ones <laughs> <laughs> than we've had in the last couple of years. Um, I th we haven't got more; probably got the same number. But, but joking apart, we do have a very nice group indeed. I mean, we, we we've been you know when we when Alex and Francis and I will you know go up to um, see all the horses training, we knew that we'd have a much much better group. Um, and, um, and, and I think there's plenty more to come. We've got a lovely horse with a La Havre cult with Roger Varian um, called uh, Broadspear, um, named after where Claudia and I live. Um, and the, of course, it's the Broadspear Syndicate, um, with all the new syndicates for this year being named after, um, as I say, where we are in the park at Highclere. And the house is called Broadspear and, um, and all the share owners have all put it up saying, well, let's call him Broadspear. And Broadspear was available. So he carries a very heavy weight of <laughs> expectation. Um, he's lovely. Um, he's going very well indeed and hopefully will make his debut um, pretty soon. I would think probably within, um, you know, just, just sort of first week of July or thereabouts, but one, definitely one to follow. Um, but there are other, the horse that was second, Harrow at Newbury this week, this, uh, week um, last week rather, he's a very, very good horse um, and definitely should be followed. Um, we've, we've got we've got a few, thank goodness. Um, I would say the best group we've had for you know probably since some you know for the last sort of four or five years. And I've had one question here about another horse uh, that we haven't seen yet in the UK, Civilian. Uh, when's he likely to step out uh, in the UK? Yeah, very frustrating. He's with Simon and Ed Crisford now. Um, was trained by Freddie Head, and then of course with Brexit had all sorts of problems trying to get him back from here into to, to France because he wintered here. Um, uh, he'd been training very well, and then suddenly, I'm afraid, he, um, uh, he had the, um, what did he do, he coughed last week. Um, and so we had to have an easy week. It's really frustrating. He, he's very decent, this horse. Um, and um, we're really excited to, to be getting him going. He's close to fitness. Probably take a run to get fully fit, because he's been off a long while. But he's a very decent horse, always highly regarded by Freddie Head. Um, definitely one to follow. Uh, Jace has said, how many winners will the great man Frankie ride? 
And uh, who would be your thought for leading rider? Um, I think it's going to be a, 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 a close one between Frankie and, and uh, William Buick. Um, I think William Buick might just be fray bit, but I, I, I ask it. Come on, Frankie. <laughs> yeah. uh, Alice Pierre, Stradivarius. It's not an you it's know, not a one of those without Frankie, is it? No, it's not. Look, he's he's riding as well as he's ever ridden. And the wonderful thing about Frank is you watch him ride. He's just very rarely, you know, gives the horse anything more than maybe one slap in a race. You know, it's all about balance and hands and heels and rhythm and judge of pace. Great jockey still riding right at the top of his game. And the final question that's come through, uh, it's from Ben Fung. Uh, and it's one I think both you and I can answer. How can I become an owner with High Clear Australia? You get immediately onto the phone with um, Andrew. <laughs> um, literally, I mean, we, we you, you know, we, we've got a lovely group of owners there. We've always had a lovely group of owners in Australia. Very much started with, um, you know, friends and friends of friends, and you know, Peter and Barnett watching there, and, and 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 others. You know, part of the real buzz is, you know, for 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 me. With Australia has been having such a lovely group of people. It's how Heikler started here. It was all about, you know, friends and then those friends introducing um, and having fun. You know, we're trying to find these good horses. We think our USP is that we can continue to buy um, exciting, um, proven horses um, to race um, down under. It's not to say we, as, as you know, we bought, you know, yearlings as well um, and horses like Edison have done very well. Um, but you know, we, we, we have those, but this proven horses are our, are our bag, particularly. And um, we've just bought one recently, which we will be telling you all about very soon, Andrew, won't we? Yes, we will. Uh, look, I'm very excited about him, but uh, we do also have a share available in Grinling as well. If uh, uh, anyone's interested in Grinling, he's a horse who has come out here. And uh, Harry, you can, you can talk a bit about Grinling and his background, um, and I'll, I'll carry on after you. Well, look, he's a good, he's a, he's a lovely horse. Richard Hannon trained him here. Um, always thought that he was, um, we bought him at the right time. Um, uh, an improving sort, son of master craftsman. Um, lovely horse. Um, and he's just interestingly, you know, he's now, hasn't he, Andrew? He's now, you know, just like, they can do take a little bit of time to acclimatise when they get down to Australia. Yeah. And then when they do start to come, it's really exciting. And that's, now he's in a position where this horse, where he's turned the corner big time and we, we must be very close to a trial, aren't we? We are. Uh, he's probably got another two serious bits of work before he heads uh, to a trial down here and down in Melbourne. But um, it's really been amazing to watch him turn the corner. Um, I saw pictures of him in February. I saw him in April. And you could just see that in the coat, in his condition, um, he was still just taking time to, to acclimatise. Um, but he got trained, he, he was just loving life down there at Balnarring and uh, now he's based up at Caulfield full time and he's just looking, he's looking a million dollars. Um, David Eustace gave me a call last week just to say, wow, he's just got off the track. He's an incredible mover, um, just a very fluent mover. And he feels that he's a horse who, he's going to be on a rating of 70 in Victoria. Um, 70 is just is ludicrous for a horse like that. Um, he should be winning very quickly and getting his rating up. Um, I don't know how high that rating can go, but 70 gives him so many options to get one, two, three wins on the board pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, we, you know, if, if anyone is interested, grab that share. It's, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't even be around. It's a, it's a horse like this. Andrew, we're going to have to mosey on here because we've got declarations to do. We've got some um, start of Royal Ascot week and, We've, um, I think we've bored everyone to death by now. Probably. We probably have, but thank you so much for taking your time out, uh, Harry, to, to chat to us. And look, uh, hopefully we're back at Royal Ascot in 2022. But uh, no, look, good luck this week. And I'm sure that everyone down here is going to be cheering and uh, hoping that we have uh, a win in the high clear two-tone blue this week. Well, well, thank you so much. And um, it's so lovely to see everybody. Um, obviously, we miss you. Um, hopefully, COVID over, we can, you know, all gather next year back at Royal Ascot without restrictions um, and um, see everyone in the owners and trainers car park come Tuesday, uh, um, you know, a, a year hence. But in the meantime, as soon as I'm allowed to get down to Australia, 
I will be on the next plane with Clodagh to see the horses and to catch up with everyone again. So um, um, lovely to see you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, and we will be in touch very soon with more news. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you very much, Harry. Have a good night, everyone. And we'll see you soon.